Welcome to our service this Sunday evening, um, very different to the one which was planned, but nevertheless it's good that we're able to gather in this way to begin to prepare ourselves for the season of Christmas. Before we start, first of all I just want to thank you for the very supportive messages, emails and texts that we've received today. It hasn't been an easy decision for myself, Rose or many of the clergy to decide what to do in these very unique circumstances and so it's been good to receive those messages and feel that we've been supported in the decisions that we've made. I can understand why many people now have become in quite tired and a bit demoralised by the events of this year 
and it's led many to say that in a way it feels that Christmas is cancelled. Well, I just want to remind everyone and it is at the heart of our faith that yes, indeed, many of our traditions, many of the ways that we would normally celebrate Christmas, maybe the difficulty now of not being able to spend time with loved ones is at the forefront of our minds. But the message of Christmas isn't cancelled at all. The message that Christ brought light into the world, he brought hope, he brought a new message of how we would relate to the Father, how we would relate to our meaning in life, how we would, in a sense, become part of that message and become a way of bringing hope and light too, is still true today. We're going to light a candle now to remind us of that light that Christ brings. There's a famous painting of the Nativity, painted by an artist called El Greco, in the 1500s, he died in the 1600s, and it confused and outraged many people at the time. It's full of movement, he used to exaggerate people's arms and legs. It was only um, actually in uh, the turn of the 20th century, early 20th century, that artists like Cezanne and Picasso really appreciated El Greco and began to imitate him in many ways. One of the techniques that El Greco and people like Rembrandt used is a technique called chiaroscuro. And chiaroscuro is when you paint a painting a dark colour. You paint it black or brown. And then with your other colours, with your blues, your reds, your yellows and a bit of white, you begin to paint light into the painting. So gradually this dark painting begins to take on form as you add light to it. And I hope that is how we can picture and begin to celebrate this Christmas. And yes, our Christmas will be a simple one. But as we remember and we light maybe a candle in our own homes, that single pure light will be picked up as we go into the new year. And as we walk into the new year with the different messages of hope that we have in terms of the vaccines, etc., that light, that sense of hope will spread. And that message, that message of faith that we carry, will be picked up by others too. That it will remain with us, that message of hope which sustained us through these difficult times, will be the message of hope and joy that we can celebrate together in the new year. It's interesting, I mentioned El Greco and it will be on your screen, that picture in the nativity, and he was forgotten in a way for many years, for hundreds of years, um, until, as I mentioned, the painter Picasso. Picasso lived through difficult times, the times of the Second World War. He was in Paris when the German soldiers marched through those streets. Picasso, probably infamously, lived an interesting life um, and stayed up late and got up to all sorts of things. And it was around Christmas, I'm not sure the story is that it was Christmas Day, but it was um, in the middle of winter towards Christmas that he had slept in late till lunchtime. And he woke up and he could hear people moving around downstairs. And he went downstairs and he saw some German soldiers trying to warm themselves by the fire. And they were starting to look to break up some of the stretches, what he built his paintings out of, to make a fire. And Picasso, rather than being outraged by what they were about to set light to, um, went around and picked up some of his drawings and ripped them up and said, why don't you start the fire with that? And as the fire was lit and added light and warmth to the room, Picasso went and got a bottle and they shared a drink around that fire. 
the soldiers probably unwittingly not knowing that they were sitting by a fire which was composed of millions and millions of dollars or they would be this day paintings which we are no longer able to see. So light comes in many ways and hopefully the lights which fill your home this Christmas will be different but nevertheless meaningful and true. And so now as we focus on the symbol of this candle, the light that Christ brings into the world as the Christ child, let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, many of us have lived through different times, extraordinary times, difficult times. And we recognise that this is one of those times, difficult time for so many people. It's been very difficult to absorb the news this weekend that it has put a halt to the preparation for many of the Christmases, even though they were going to be reduced, the Christmas celebrations with family members. We pray that even though we won't be able to be with loved ones in the same way, that we would still have a sense of your presence in our lives, that you would encourage us, that you would encourage us to be support to others, and that as we focus on the light, that you would bring us to a realisation that your light travels with us always, through good times, through difficult times, through bad times. That light is constant, ever glowing, and it is our task to discern, perceive and follow that light. We would ask, therefore, you would give us that insight this Advent and through this Christmas season. We ask it in your Son's name. Amen. And so for this evening, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you always throughout this Advent season and evermore. Amen. There's probably lots of people to thank um, for the different ways they've contributed in difficult times to church life but I just want to give a general thanks at this time to everyone. We have been in this together and we will continue to work together in the coming year across the nine churches of the Benefice and we do hope that we will share happier times. One of the ways it would be good to share with you in our Christmas service this year is of course, we won't be in church, our churches ourselves, we won't be able to light our Advent candles. But if you can take a photo of your Christmas tree, or maybe you or a loved one, maybe a son or daughter or a grandchild, lighting a simple candle in your home. If you're able to take some of those Christmas photos and send them to me, maybe text a number or an email, and we will include them as part of our Christmas service so we can feel that we're celebrating Christmas as a benefit, as church communities together. That would be a nice thing to do. So I hope you've enjoyed some of the contributions we've had this evening. It isn't what we'd planned, um, but we do plan some further services online and please um, continue to watch Facebook for contributions from Rose, myself and others over the coming days. I'm also probably going to be recommending a couple of films to watch over Christmas, so stay tuned for my impression of a poor film critic over the next couple of days. And we'll have a Christmas story and we'll also have more Christmas carols. So please watch our further services this week. But for now, God bless and enjoy the rest of Advent.